first let me say I, I apologize for not being there with you to go through this math together in person. Today we're going to be talking about variation equations. There are different types of variation equations. These are not difficult equations. You just have to be able to read the words, identify the type of variation, and write the corresponding equation. Then you'll be asked to find a few other pieces of information. So the first type of variation that we're going to talk about is direct variation. Now variation is the relationship between two variables, in this case x and y, and direct variation is written as this type of equation, y equals k times x. Now k is your constant of variation. It is a variable that represents the proportionality, the relationship between y and x. This is just a linear function. Now, k cannot equal 0 because if k equals 0, we see that the right-hand side will be 0. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to read when it says y varies directly as x or y is proportional to x and turn that into this equation. Look at the first example. It says that y varies directly as x. The key is to see how y varies. Then we would write the corresponding equation. y varies directly as x. Now the key is to substitute in values for x and y to be able to find that constant of variation k. So we have been given y equals 45 so I'm going to substitute that in for y. And we have been given that x equals 5. So now this is just a linear equation that we can solve for k. How do we do that? We divide both sides by 5. And we get that k equals 9. Now I'm going to take that constant of variation and I'm going to substitute it back into the variation equation. So I have y equals 9 times x. So that is your variation function. Now you have been given an, an additional piece of information. You have been given x equals 13, and we're trying to figure out what y is when x equals 13. So all I'm going to do is substitute into your variation function y, what we're looking for, equals 9 times 13. So what is y in this case when x equals 13? y is 117. So what you notice is that for direct variation, if x is increasing, then y will be increasing. So if I substitute in values for x, as I substitute in larger and larger values, y will become larger and larger as well. Similarly, if I substitute in smaller and smaller values for x, meaning y is decreasing, then x is decreasing, then y also will be decreasing. This is the pattern that you will recognize in the relationship between x and y for direct variation. Now, we can also increase directly with powers of x. So how would I read this? This would be y varies directly as x in this case, to the nth power. So you can raise x to a power. The second type of variation is called inverse variation. It's still a relationship between x and y, but notice the pattern. So here is the equation for 
inverse variation. Again, x cannot equal 0. How do we read that? We read it as y varies inversely as x. So when you read those words, you should think of this equation. So here let's look at an example. Given y varies inversely as x, so again, what do we write? y varies inversely as x, we put x in the denominator because we're inverting the placement of x. So here is your inverse variation equation and we need to find k. So if I'm trying to find k, I'm going to substitute in what I have been given for y and x. So y is 6. K is the constant of variation that we're finding, and x is 3. So if I want to solve for k, all I have to do is multiply both sides by 3, and I get that the constant of variation k equals 18. So now I have to write my variation function. So I'm going to take the general form, and I'm going to substitute in my constant of variation. This, again, is the variation function for this relationship that you've been given. Now, you have been given some additional information which will allow you to find a y given a value of x. So I'm going to substitute in x equal 9 and that would give me y equals 2. So when x is 9, y is 2. Now, what is the pattern that you notice for inverse variation? If you were to substitute in larger and larger values of x, then what will you notice about y? y would be decreasing. If you substitute in smaller and smaller values of x, then what do you notice will happen with y? The corresponding values of y would be increasing. So this is the pattern that you will see for inverse variation.